Fam, this Mind the Mic podcast is proudly brought to you by Manscaped. Before we get into this episode, I want to give you the opportunity to check out manscaped.com and use our promo code MindTheMic. That's one word, Mind the Mic for 20% off plus free shipping across the entire website. That's it. Manscaped.com, code MindTheMic for 20% off plus free shipping across everything on the website. Where you can get cool things just like this. The Lawn Mower 5.0. Look, it's even got a light. And you can trim up all them unnecessary hairs, get rid of them. It's actually made for the downstairs, but you can use it for both if you want. They also have bed trimmers, especially for the bed. But this one here is actually made for the downstairs. So get amongst it, get rid of all them loose hairs hanging around down there. And once you've done that, make sure you clean up that nose too. So we've got the Weed Whacker 2.0 for the nose. The Weed Whacker 2.0 is for the nose and the ears. We all get annoyed by those hairs, don't we? And we got the crop soother. So once you've finished that undercarriage, come get some of this crop soother in your life. What's crop soother? It's an aftershave for the down there. But I've done it. I've tried it. And it doesn't sting like your dad's aftershave. So you're good to go. And if you want to keep it smelling nice, we've got the crop preserver. Deodorant for the balls. That's anti-chafing. Not to mention these are waterproof, fam. So if you're like... Yeah, but I like those manual ones because they I can use them in the shower. Well, never fear. Manscaped is here. Go hard in the shower. It's waterproof, fam. Good present for your dad, for your brother, your boyfriend, your husband. Well, brothers, treat yourself. Go get you some Manscaped in your life. Use promo code MindTheMic for 20% off plus free shipping across everything on the website. Enjoy the episode. Make sure you subscribe and get some Manscaped in your life. Mind the mic. Hey, welcome back to another Mind the Mic podcast. I'm your host, Shubs, here with a successful businessman, an entrepreneur, if you will, at Refugee via from Cambodia by way of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, you might even seen a few athletes throwing out as uh, throwing out the old Go Paleos um, code out there. But yeah. brother, Marcus Lim, what's goody? How are you, brother Marcus? I'm good, bro. Good, very good, man. Uh, thanks uh, for having me uh, today, uh, no, man. I'm, I'm keen ass, bro. I'm like, whatever, man. We have a yarn, brother. We have a talk, eh? Yeah, um, that's it. Yeah. Shout out to Ed for too, having for me today, bro. Up. Yeah, brother. Shout out to Ed for jacking it up too. Oh yes, yes. He was on. Was it uh, last week, eh? Yeah, a couple of weeks. Yeah, last week. Last week. That's right, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, shout out to him for 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 he said he said to me straight away, oh, oh, because he because he, I seen him keep uh promoting you know go paleo and I thought, hey, does the brother want to do a podcast? He's like, yeah, why not? Ask him. Yeah. <laughs> Ask him. And here we yeah, are. Yeah, yo, yo, yeah. He told me as well, bro. So basically, um, I trained him up. Yeah. Try to get him uh in shape for his uh another roles coming, big roles coming. So yeah. now he's on set at the moment, bro. So we have to get him like really in a good shape for his role. Yeah. So he's pretty pretty happy about it. Yeah, awesome, brother. I guess for anybody that doesn't know you, brother, can you give us a little background on yourself? You so my from? background, man, uh, refugee, been here um, with another family, without my parents, uh, when I was uh, 13. And 13. then... Um, uh, making my way up, man. It's like hustling, bro. Gotta, yeah. Gotta, gotta work while you uh, study at the same time. And then um, I became a men physique athlete. I compete like over probably 40 shows. Um, I used to be really skinny, bro, and always sick, you know? Hmm. So I'm like, man, gotta start training. When I start training, man, I fall in love. My physique start changing. And, um, and then I, hey, give it a go. Back then, I was on my bakery as well. I'm a baker, bro. Baking yeah, all the pies, man. Steak yeah. and cheese pie all day. And like, yeah. what is life? Am I going to do this the rest of my life? Yeah. And that's when I'm like giving bodybuilding competition a go, bro. And then keep winning. Um, keep winning and, and, and crown four time New Zealand national champion. And, um, uh, Mr. Wellington, oh, bro, New Zealand, two-time Vicaro, two times Auckland. Yeah. Um, and then I went on to compete, uh, represent New Zealand at uh, a world champion in Japan. And then we won world champion in 2019. 
mm-hmm. and then uh, at the same time yeah i i opened my go paleo company as well um along with my competition prep and that's how it all got started bro Wow, awesome, brother! Mm. Hey, before we kept we tap into all of that though, like you said, refugee. Where does the refugee from? Where? Um, uh, Cambodia, bro. Basically, um, I feel like uh, my my mum. We got a big family of five kids, mm. and then, bro, I was hard man after war and stuff, and it, there was nothing at all. Similar to Bun, basically, bro. But he got parents, but I don't. You okay? And uh, my parent basically given me away to another to another family that's like okay. they know each other yeah and then at 13 um, was it 13 year old bro 13 right. year old what, so what was those those 13 years before that before that what was life like in cambodia oh, that you oh, life, bro, I, I start realizing i used to live in a slum man like yeah like i look back when i'm growing up here and then when i had my own kid bro and I start looking back, shit, man. My son is so lucky to be here. Eh? <laughs> yeah, G. And then uh, I look back, bro. Back in the day, man, there was nothing when I'm growing up. Uh, you go to school and there's no government support. And basically, whatever the slum like, it's like that, bro. Like, bro, <laughs> crazy, man. We don't even have clean water. Mm. Um, We walk to school in the mud. Like flip flop, you know, when you walk to school, oh, flip yeah. flop and mud, and uh, crazy man. There's uh, there's basically nothing there, bro. Like all the after the war, they destroy everything. If you heard about like the killing field, the Khmer Rouge, yeah, um, um, they're killing all the smart people, uh, whoever the doctor, whoever work, like whatever you smart, like mm. gone. They kill you just yeah. like Any that. Any profession, bro. all the professions, eh? Knock them all, all the off. professions yeah and they only leave the farmers behind the one that like like put in a word bro pretty much if you're dumb mm. they can use you you know they can use yeah. you left and right it's like communist bro yeah basically um and man it's it's really it's really tough man growing up with a big uh five five siblings and and there's no government support and basically you're on your own you're like hey you don't you don't hustle you out you know only the tough survive the weak yeah. die basically yeah. bro pretty yeah. much it eh? that's pretty much it man mm. no solid brother so and and like did you go to school there or like more like like hard out or like yeah yeah school? i went, 13, I went, school. 13 I went, school? I went oh. school there bro i went like primary and then okay all the way yeah, yeah up to primary school yeah i think i was uh uh year six year six that's when i start start moving to new zealand yeah oh and then when you come to new zealand what's that transition like brother coming moving to new zealand what's the transition like well the transition is like uh completely opposite right eh? like you come to a country with no english bro like oh, oh bro, true, wow. bro. <laughs> <laughs> Someone like what the hell like you know and what i noticed the most when i landed in new zealand bro like the air like so clean hmm the air like oh you can't way different, eh? like, yeah way different bro back then like humid and then um it's not as clean uh pollution. compared to, to new zealand like pollution pollution yeah that's right mm. that's right yeah must be uh tired brother how much is this ah. my podcast today or is it first oh, one today? Nah, brother just on a on a bloody um on a fast cuz on a fast down and then fucking my energy's a bit low cuz he and then right. yeah had a bit of a had a bit of a long night with the kids brother <laughs> oh bro but, i saw you got you got three but, kids too late eh? yeah brother three kids oh. brother apologies though brother but it's not you're not boring me cuz he it's just the body's going ah oh, but we'll get through brother we will get through right. hard we work through. bro hard work yeah. gonna pay off brother that's it brother that's it we're gonna that's hustle like gonna the brother marcus slim that's it keep hustling cuz so when you, when you say so you moving over no english uh what, what what where do you move to? What's the neighborhood you moved to? Oh originally? gee, Riva. <laughs> oh, true, cuz yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, Riva, bro. I remember. I think I went to Man Riva High School. 
Oh yeah, man. Uh, it's it's just uh, bro. There must have been a culture shock, eh, brother, for you, like uh, coming no English and then like throwing in with all the brown people, eh? All the yeah, all the, yeah. all, the, all, the all the all the all the polys in there and the Maoris, all, all eh? the polys, all the gangster, like bro. Come <laughs> with me, <brother>. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was there only for like a year though, and then I oh, moved okay. to uh, uh, Auckland Grammar School and uh, and Newmarket. Oh, how did you get there, cars? See, uh, bro, like some sort of uh, just move the location, but I pretty much it. Oh, not even, zone, you know, oh, just like that, just zoned, <laughs> like, just the school it, zone, bro. Just like, yeah, you couldn't take it, eh? Uh, uh, uh different, different kind of uh, crowd, you know. Yeah. Um, but I remember there's a few Vietnamese people as well back back then. Vietnamese, some hey, Mauritian as well. Yeah, back in Riva. Oh, back in Mauritania. Oh, yeah, so when 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 you when you go to a new country and you and you, you're going straight to high school, so most all these kids or most of them would speak English. What's it like, brother, as someone that doesn't speak English? To, to oh, I, I was in I was in Isol, G. Yeah, Isol, Isol. Uh, with a bunch of different nationalities, bro, like Vietnamese, Korean, uh, Thai so did you people. teach each other how to, how to talk English? Yeah, or oh, wow, oh, shit, oh, like, bro, like, somehow, man, got a dictionary that shit back then, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been, it's been tough, man. It's been, it's what, been a journey. What year was this, brother? Shit, I came New Zealand 2013. Probably 14 or 15, bro. Oh, no, 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 2003. I came here 2003, so it would have been 2005 or 2006. And 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, 20 years ago, yeah. <laughs> wow, right, brother. Time, yeah. time fly, my G, yeah, 100. And at, at that point, brother, when you when you moved to New Zealand, did you know anything about New Zealand at the time? Uh, no, nah, no, nah. it's, 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 it's like my uncle, my uncle was here first, bro. Okay, and all I see was. All I knew about New Zealand is the map. That's oh, like that's a, all. You could just find it's it on like the map. It's like the two island, North Island and South Island. I'm like, oh, okay. And everybody uh, back then, bro, they just want to get out of the country yeah, because there's no opportunity there. Yeah. And they, they need to find any way to just wherever country they can get, uh, uh, grab a seat on, bro. And my uncle was here, was here already. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's why, might as well just get out. <laughs> might as well just get out, eh? Mm. Oh, well, good on you, brother. You made it out anyway, cuz. Hey, you made mm. it out. And and when but when you're back there, brother, what kind of sports are you playing in Cambodia? You play sports? Oh, or... in, in Cambodia, bro. Um, yeah. like similar to Thai and Vietnam, their traditional sport is like Muay Thai, bro. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, uh, we call it Kun Khmer, Kun Khmer oh, as a kickboxing. Kun yeah, 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 and also uh, soccer, soccer, oh, yeah. football. He's... But, yeah, what I see different here, bro, like the first time I come to the school, they play rugby, yeah. And we're like, What so the hell is I find, this? I find it like, like, fuck, is it we used to play with our feet and now we play with our hands, you know, mm. and that, that's just a difference, bro. Did you did you ever play rugby, bro? Like at school, that much? Oh yeah, yeah. I I play a couple of times with the poly boys, bro. And then they yeah. pass the ball to me. They sit me up. They, hey, you get smashed they, up, brother. They, they smashed up, bro. Like back <laughs> then, brother. Oh, gee. And that's why I put rugby, bro. And, <laughs> I knew that dude, bro. That Islander dude, bro. He sit me up. He passed the ball to me. Another guy just fuck and shoulder tackle me bro and I was like, <laughs> fuck you bro thank you I'll go back to soccer <laughs> yeah, I like, don't worry bro I get back to soccer and then yeah bro I got massive hit back then it's like my first week of school too bro I'm like bro oh, I never, great, going, I never going to play the sport again <laughs> <laughs> soccer back to soccer guys <laughs> right up man how long did it take you to learn English do you reckon like to learn it enough to get by I reckon like after the four to five years, bro. Oh damn! Yeah, oh, yeah. That's ages. But, but I think before before I came here, I could I I started uh, study English already, but yeah. uh, it, it's, it's not enough to make communication, bro. Because where we live, we all speak Cambodian, and yeah, and so you're not practicing to, today. Yeah, to improve, we have to speak with somebody that actually lives it, it. You know? Yeah, yeah, for true. Sure. 
Mm. Ah, four or five years. Did any, any 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 like times in there where you're like, man, this is just annoying. Like like because you know communication is key mm. in all relationships, right? And mm-hmm. especially in just talking to people. How do you like right here? If we didn't know how to talk to each other, this would be pointless. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly, bro. Yeah, yeah like, no. Nah, um, I kind of knew some English already before I move. Um. Yeah. But yeah, it take me a bit of take me sometimes, bro. To did you just get react. angry, brother? Like when like you couldn't like say what you wanted to say or like tell, oh, tell people. Oh no, no. I think back then my uh, the English basic pretty much there already, bro. Oh okay. The, the basic English there already can communicate, can understand each other. It's not yeah. like zero, you know. It's it's not like fresh, fresh, bro. I was uh, when I knew that I'll be coming to New Zealand. I spent about two years studying English. Oh, okay. oh, so you knew a long time before you came over. Yeah, I knew. I knew. I, I I actually went to English school before I come to New Zealand, bro. So it's not, it's not like fresh, man. It's not like fresh off the boat, you know. Yeah, fresh off yeah. the boat. Yeah, no, nah, I get it. So yeah, because I I would just think myself if I was thinking about it, I'd probably feel angry, like if someone didn't understand what I was trying to say, like ah, you know what I mean? You know yeah. what I mean, brother? Yeah, but it's yeah, after like two or three years, it's still like uh, it's not fluent, bro. It's still like really fop, you know, like yeah, you're the fop, fop bro. <laughs> That's the worst, brother. Fop, man, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're the fop, cousin. Hey, and, and with, with your schooling in there, brother, what, what did you did, did you excel in anything? Like, was school were you good at school? Um. I actually I was doing really good at Manurewa, brother, because uh, oh, yeah. the school you was, was raining uh, down there, can't say. Yeah, uh, there's uh there are mix, there's girls and guys. Yeah. And and there's uh always a reason to go to school because hey, some hot chicks at school, brother. <laughs> and then as soon as I moved to Auckland Grammar, bloody three thousand boys, bro. Oh. <laughs> My, my my grade was shit, man. You know? Yeah, you don't like the boys like that. <laughs> No, thank you. Obviously man. not, man. No, it's no. Like, <laughs> went to went to hard hard out academic school, you know, and these guys yeah. just focus on their own lane and they don't like, you know, they doing their own stuff and mm-hmm. they just focus on studying basically. Hey. Eh? Did you graduate um, in it? Yeah, I finished the high school uh when uni, bro. I went uni oh. after, yeah. Oh mm. yeah, uni. What did you do at uni? Uh I did business, bro. Did business and then yeah. uh after that I did personal training. Now, oh, now, now that you've like obviously you've been in business, how long have you been in business for? Oh, business talk about about ten years now, bro. Okay, now that you've done business and you think about you, you went to uni and studied business. Hmm. How much of that studying did you actually apply to your like? Have you actually used in your whole business life? Honestly, bro, I think it's unmatched to the real world, bro. Yeah, just real experience, eh? Like real world experience, like the book theory, bro. There was yeah. nothing I get out of that <laughs> from, bro, bro. To be honest, like <clears throat> straight up, hey. <laughs> like you learn as you go, you know. Yes, you you go. learn as you go, and yeah. And you didn't have an open book on like what is this and that. It's it's, it's unmatched to the real world, to be honest. Figure bro. it Waste, out, hey. Wasting oh, all yeah. the money and, and yeah, yeah. They're just getting that paper, yeah. They just getting that paper, yeah. Yeah, I that, get what you mean. Yeah, so we we basically once you open a business, bro. I think you the business will teach you. Yeah, yeah, that's enough. Like you just just learn how to open one, start one, and that's enough. That's that's go, it, go start, eh? yeah. The theory basically fuck that's been useless, <laughs> bro. Honestly, spend twenty or thirty grand, honestly, bro. Oh, bullshit, eh? <laughs> no, no. Crack up, crack up. What was the first business you got into, then, Miller? Um. Bakery man, Cambodian. Oh, the bro. bakery, true, yeah. Cambodian and Vietnamese. What do you reckon? Bro. Were yours were yours the baddest pies or what? Like you'd oh, be honest. Oh my pie's pretty nice, man. We made yeah. from the staff. Yeah, yeah. Uh I think I was in the bakery for about two or three years. And then uh and then happened as Auckland Council built a motorway on the top of our shop, and then they ended up buying it so i'm like nah okay enough time bro just flick it off oh it was such yeah. too much hard work bro did you get a good wicket though did they pay you all right for that for that yeah profit? they pay what we paid for bro uh, whatever oh, they we bought you didn't for. make a profit yeah we didn't we didn't make any profit bro we didn't lose any money 
Well, that's so good too. Like, not losing in the year. Yeah, but like now nah, I had enough two or three years. Bro, that was hard work. Three or four a.m. Yeah. start. Three finish four like, bro. Um, what time you yeah. finish? Finish like seven to nine p.m. Bro. How many days a week? Six days a week. And then what? What were you? What were you pulling in a week? We were, were you get it? Like we had enough money to do other shit or not? Nah? Just... Oh yeah, yeah, good money, bro. Good money. Oh, good money. Uh, okay. Back then. Um, of 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 I run of we run by by myself, but uh, we got partner partnership as well. My family, my sister, mm -hmm. so yeah. whatever we make is split to two. Yeah, but if we uh sole owner, then you make a good money, but a, oh, a lot yeah? of hard work, bro. A lot of hard work. Like, what are we talking? If it's good money, give you an example. Probably uh, turn over about point. between seven to ten k a week. Oh. Seven grand to ten k a week, bro, and you probably yeah. walked out probably four grand a week, three to four. Oh grand. yeah, yeah, but but mahi, yeah, you gotta put that mahi in there. Wow, you go. gee, like, bro, like, man, hard work, man. Like, to be honest, really hard work. Uh, Looking back on it now, brother, what is the, what what's something that you learned from that experience? Uh, like, I, as in, what's hmm. the biggest takeaway from that bakery experience? I, I, I reckon, bro, like. If you can do bakery, you can do anything, bro. True, true. Fuck, if you can do a bakery job, yeah. that means it will set you up for anything. You you won't be scared, bro. You're like, oh, oh piece of cake, okay? Yeah. Like, you, look, you look at things like that, you know, you start at 3 to 4 a.m., you finish around 9 p.m. What time are you waking up, brother? Bro, fuck, like 3.30, get to the shop at 4 a.m., and what time? Fuck, <laughs> well, I know you have enough time to have a shit there. Oh, fuck it. It's crazy how, how's uh, yeah, three to four a.m. and then uh, and then uh, especially in the winter, bro. Fuck. Oh, yeah, hard to get up yeah. there, eh, brother. Hard to bro, get up like, in the winter. That four to five a.m. is like the best time to sleep, and your alarm ring, you're like, what the fuck. Like, what am I gonna do with my life? Hey, eh? like, what am I, I doing here? Yeah, do do I want to just follow this the rest of my life? You know, you keep asking yeah. your questions. Yeah, <laughs> crazy this man. Is what, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> baking, baking all day. Basically, you work through, but like rushing, man. It's like a rush hour, bro. Like yeah. you wouldn't, you don't even have time to eat when you're eating. You're eating standing, bro. So. If you slowing one job down, everything will slow down, you know? Oh, yes, yeah, so the whole thing operates with you, eh, brother? Like, you Yeah, the that. whole thing have to operate fast, fast. And yeah. if you slow a bit, it will take you like 9, 10 p.m., you know? If you oh, true. relax a bit. So what's it's something that, long. What's something that, like, during the bakery thing, you think, fuck, that was a waste of time doing that? Or is there anything you learned, like, ah, oh, I didn't, uh, don't have this in my bakery? Is there anything that you, like, cut out that you're like, ah? That's just wasting my time or wasting money. Uh, oh, good question, bro. Good question. But at that time, bro, that's when I start my meal prep company at the back of the kitchen. Oh, go pay you. Yeah, yeah. I start. I start making, adding those meal at at because from my background, I'm already a personal trainer already. I think when I when before, you get time I, to train, <laughs> what are you doing this? Oh, bro, I I train. I train seven days a week while I open a bakery. G. So what? So what? When did? So what time you close the bakery? Like for example, like six p.m. We kind of slow down with a job. I run to the gym for an hour, yeah, and then I come back and then finishing the job. Oh, okay. Seven so o'clock till nine. That's, that's, that's of... my my own business, you know. Like you yeah. can kind yeah, of do whatever you want to do, but you just yeah, need yeah. to. So you keep things. training in the Jeez. oh bro well, yeah that's that's how my body building actually start cooking off when I starting the bakery because fuck I don't want to do the baking the rest of my life and that's how <laughs> coming in. I'm like bro I'm gonna use my body and then bro I think I complete about 15 shows yeah five shows a year during the bakery time wow and it was the hardest ever. Was it the busiest you've been in your life too? The bakery plus the doing the training in it? Yeah, that was the hardest, bro. Like, especially you're on a diet, strict diet. Oh, true. <laughs> the smell of the pies coming out from the oven, bro. 
Yeah, it's good discipline, man. eh, brother? Good discipline. That's know? discipline, man. Like, man, that was tough, man. That was tough time. Like, good memory to talk back. Thanks for asking, bro. Reminding me. Yeah. I can just smell the pies. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you still, do, you still, like, do you still dust off the old baking uh, skills sometimes? Uh, not, 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 not really, bro. After we left the bakery, pretty much we focused, uh, focusing on the paleo meal. My, yeah. uh, my meal prep company. Yeah, because you said you built it out of the back of the bakery, right? At the same, yeah. so at the same time, you. Were, so what? What would be the go? Take us through the process. Like you make, what? What, what would be happening while you're making your go paleos? Because obviously you're still running the bakery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how do you make? <laughs> how are you making those meals happen? Like, gee, uh, just like adding more jobs, hey, eh? more job, <laughs> and then my, my sister, like, bro, cut that shit out, man. We like. <laughs> <laughs> you've been busy already and now you're starting this i'm like hey why not if it bring you more income why not and then yeah. we the build it up yeah we're building it yeah. up to the point that like holy shit we're making more money than selling pies oh true even yeah. while you had the bakery while we had the bakery bro and and then my sister was telling me hey stop it because we don't have time you should cut it I'm like, yeah. man, I'm, I'm not going to cut it, man. Like, oh, it's hey, taking okay. off now. And and then at the same time, yeah, the Auckland console hit us up, want to buy our bakery to build a motorway on the top over yeah. North Shore, Green Heights. Yeah. And then I, at the same time, it'll be like perfect time, bro, to cross over, you know. And then I sold that and then opened a physical uh, cooking uh, kitchen in Pam Muir and, and, and Alice Lee. And my, yeah. True, brother. Anyway, so how does that when that starts off? How does it start to blow up? Social media? What's the go? How do you get your your name out there through all this? And probably and what, through the body building, eh? Because I'm. Oh, I was, yeah, that's right. True that. True that. Good. I was uh, really active. I was really active, and uh, at the same time, every time I prep, I promote my meal along as well. I take my meal along my journey. Yeah. And that's how it got like yes to to where we are right now. You know. Eesh. That's cool, brother. So, and how long are we now in, in that journey? In the so we trip? we in uh, the eighth seven years seven years of of uh, running Go Paleo now, bro. Seven years of Go Paleo. Mm, mm, yeah. mm, seven and years. So, We've been helping, yeah. been helping a lot of top combat sport like Dan Hooker. You know, the last fight I was uh, his nutritionist. I cut his weight provide him meals what meal he needs and stuff like that you know like mm -hmm. provide to joseph parker roger toivasa shake darlins you know Magello, the warriors mm -hmm. so we've been work yeah we've been working across a lot of uh professional athletes uh yeah yeah are you a nutritionist too cuz yeah bro yeah yeah all right you do it all eh, brother do it all brother Personal yeah. trainer connected with the nutritionist, so the whole yard, bro. Get a hustling, man. Yeah, what a hustler, my brother. I love it. Yeah. He, he's covering hustling, all the man. bases, the brother Marcus Lim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, nah, that's on, brother. That's on, yes. You the man. Shout out to the brother Marcus Lim. Yo. I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> See you, cousin. Yeah. Who was the first athlete that you was connected with? Oh, back, back then, bro, like, uh, we were, I think the first two years, we were really focusing on a professional, like, like, uh, body, like a men physique athlete, like Mr. Olympia and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Any, yeah anyone oh, that we can, that, that people might know? I don't know if you know, like, J Jeremy Tavanga. Nope. <laughs> but, uh, who's, no, uh, that's we used to have about uh, Sifu Samoa. Oh, okay. Uh, you, do you know him or? Nah, nah, not sure. Oh. But if they want to come on the podcast, they're always welcome, brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll we get some other people, maybe yeah, some performer, bro. Because I'm now, I'm in like, I'm, I'm more in like making movies, bro. I'm more Ooh, I'm true, performer man. for movies now, you know. Yeah. And, are you going to jump on too? Huh? Are you going to jump on too or are you just going to train the actors? Oh, I'm already on the movies, brother. Oh, you're already on them? Fire, bro. Yeah. Oh, been, what's, been, what's this movie? I've been doing stunt for five years now since pandemic acting and stunt. So okay. um, I was. Fuck, I know. Is there anything you don't do? 
Oh, bro, oh, gonna keep hustling, my brother. Yes, sir, my brother. <laughs> okay, like, stunt man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now I enjoy cool. more stun, stun, bro. A lot of fighting, fight scene. We work with uh, Aquaman too, Jason Momoa. If you see the scene that he fighting out at the container ship, raining, that's yeah. our team, bro. We 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 oh, fight. Oh, true. Um, so you yeah. were that, you were in that scene, there? Oh, yeah, you, I wasn't that scene there, bro. One wow. of the crew ship, brother. I'm one of the crew ship. That's really cool. There. That's really cool, cousin. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the brother Ed didn't give me not much background. He just said, "Yeah, talk to the brother Marcus," and here we are. So yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. So 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 it's more like actors. He more yeah. acting. So I was more he like, like uh, Mamua? Was he right? I heard he's pretty cool, cool dude. Oh, bro, he's cool dude, man. We have a chat as well. I was, um, I think I was on Chief of War. They they, they when when they're shooting Chief of War, and I was next to him the whole time. We have a chat. I asked him, "Yo, is your you're here as a tattoo, like real tattoo. He's like, yeah, yeah. But he's a cool dude, bro. Like, uh, really friendly, you know. People love him. He loves all the road too, eh, the fellow? Yeah, yeah. He's shooting, I back. think, I think he's shooting something at the moment with uh, AIDS, brother. Oh, true. Ah, yeah. This is, this is Chief of War. That's right. Chief of War. Oh, that's what they're up to now. Oh, yeah. that's good. Doing Me. some pickup shoot, and I saw it just posted up in his trailer today. So he must be on set, bro. So that's what I've been up to lately, brother. Just, just, uh, uh, just hustling my way through, you know. Hey, yeah. How does the opportunity to get on as a as an actor uh, come about? How does that uh, as a, as a stuntman or whatever? How does that first opportunity come? Um, I think cool. Oh, Oh, take take took me some time as well, bro. Because as 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 the big game, man. Like took me now. I've been trained about five years now in stunt, stunt yeah. training. The first two years, maybe nothing really on because of COVID. And then I landed my first stunt job as Power Ranger, bro. Like Netflix series. Oh, oh, you in, oh, so you in that too? Yeah, I was in the suit, bro. Like, yeah, in the suit and doing all those, uh, like, I was in a monster and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I think that was my first gig that I actually got on, uh, Power Ranger, and then built my way up. Mm -hmm. um, I was playing, I don't know if you know about Mortal Kombat. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I was playing uh, uh, Sub-Zero, lead role, Sub-Zero, and Noob Cybot. I think maybe... Oh. A month or two months ago, we finishing shooting there. Yep. So a lot of action, but a lot of fighting, a oh. lot of on, yeah. uh, a lot of storytelling, and now we wrap that up, and uh, it's in the post production. It won't release until twenty twenty five. What do you What do you enjoy about this uh, new gig, this uh, acting stuntman stuff? Um, what I enjoy is this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> making That's that, it. making that, and yeah. and it's uh, it's safer than you go in the ring and fight because I used to, True. I used to compete in fighting. Uh, I used to train, but this is talking about before I owned a bakery, bro. Like mm -hmm. you probably know Israel and Desanya, Blood Diamond. Oh, yeah, I've heard, I've heard of them. all of them. Somewhere, I think. He, I think yeah, he, I used yeah. I used to start similar time with them at City Kickboxing. Oh, I see, KB. Their place has come yeah. a long way, hey, brother. Yeah, and the Mount Eden, uh, they were really small, bro, really tiny, bro, back then. Now they're and, huge, eh? And now they, yeah, they gone big, bro. And uh, and then, bro, back then there's no money in fighting, bro. You yeah. go in the ring, you gotta get hurt, regardless. Yeah, yeah. And, you get hurt uh, until your pocket. Yeah. yeah, and then there's no money. And that's when I got married, I move on to open a bakery, and then I built, I built my momentum through when i built having some money that's when i mm. uh you know keep investing and keep climbing the ladder brother wow mm. that place has come a long way then eh? obviously ckb growing up uh, blowing up and obviously now there's a lot more money in the sport now yes uh, compared to when you were first in it for sure um, Wow, that's cool. What was um I guess Eugene and what was Eugene like back then? Did he was he always a bit of a bit of a mastermind back in the days? Yeah, Eugene always he always quiet, eh? He doesn't joke around that much. And yeah. I uh I used to stay, but I don't know if you you know Jay Jason Ashdani. Um, he used to be one of the fighter and his flatting okay. together. Um we yeah. flat at the same apartment and Eugene used to come over all the time. 
Yeah. And yeah, everybody was, and he was quiet, we, did you say? Yeah, we didn't get to communicate that much, you know. It's just like oh, okay. he's like great face, like coach face for you know, you're looking yeah. up, oh, that guy looks scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, but um, he's, the, he's done awesome he, as a coach, hey, brother. Yeah, him just the, way whole, the whole team. Mm. Hey? Mm. Him and his whole team, the whole team, they've done awesome, like whole like great coaching team, obviously, to for sure. Him and Doug in the and the rest. Nah, awesome, bro. <coughs> very odd. Like again, usually, brother, like if I get people on here, I, I, I like to learn about them and just they just teach me about them, you know what I mean? And whoever listens to this. But yeah, I didn't know I didn't know all this stuff because Ed didn't tell me that. It just said what did Ed so tell you, bro, in general? He just said, go pay <laughs> nope. Yeah, he just said, yeah, as a businessman, cousin, he didn't tell me all the rest. Gee, yeah. there's a lot of hard work behind that, bro, behind that close curtain. Oh, you know? I'm sure. I'm sure, brother. Yeah, as I'm learning oh. too, brother. And yeah, shout out to the cousin Marcus, brother. Hey. When, you said, when you said hustling, brother, at the start, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the hustling. Now I'm like, oh, yeah, he really hustling. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. All right, bro. Yeah. yeah. So, what, how does it work now with the go paleo? Like, do you not cook it anymore? So you got other. I do. I do stuff? still. I do still cooking, bro. Like, but I got my family helping out, like my wife, you know. Yeah. So, uh, whenever I'm on set, I'm I'm shuffling the the the, the chef and get the staff to cover mm -hmm. my chef, you know. Yeah. And how many staff you got in in, in the? Oh, building? we used to have about seven to nine staff back then. So now, because of COVID, bro, we're down to about four. Three to four yeah. at the moment, yeah. But that's enough to keep it all maintained at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just too much uh, inflation at the moment, but the world going crazy after COVID, you know. And yeah. especially and living we, in New Zealand, brother, the highest cost of living yeah. over there, brother. Oh, gee, like unbelievable, brother. Mm. People, you know that, you know that guy Ed uh, Rivera, the Mexican dude, comedian. Oh yes. He was saying, he goes, yeah, yeah, I come, because he, when, he, when he migrated to New Zealand, he migrated to, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to New Zealand and make some money. And he goes, nobody told me you can't make money in New Zealand. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, you know, it's just hard, very, very hard. You know what I mean? Oh, very, that's, very hard. that's just a lot of people, man. Over 100,000 people moved to Australia now. Yeah. Oh, since COVID? Uh, oh, actually, like, the this statistics year? say in March, bro, March this year. <laughs> Just this year, wow! But this but not year. surprised, brother, because if you compare like the cost of living, the price, the price of food, price of mm. houses, and and how much you get paid here, it makes sense, brother. You yeah, know? yeah, it's, it yeah. makes sense because you guys are getting more, you know, like yeah, more get a lot more over here, here, way more than gee, yeah. like over here. Sometimes I sit down, it's like, bro, whoever run the country, fuck, like honest to God, like it doesn't make sense, bro. Yeah, don't make sense. Make sense right? Don't make sense, eh, brother? Even like, even things when I see like, like all the, you know, how much um, food New Zealand mass produces, like, uh, you know, how much food we can, like, you know, with when it comes to dairy products and yeah. all these kinds of things. There's no way it should cost that much for like milk and butter and stuff when we make it all. Like that, don't make no sense, brother. Exactly, bro. Another day, I think one of my colleague posted up of one. 500 gram butter is ten dollars now g 10 bucks Fuck. it used to be like 350 max bro it'll be all right if it was 10 bucks and then like the average wage was like fucking 30 something bucks you know what i mean that'll be all right but that don't make no sense you know what i mean and even uh an egg of tray bro that's why yeah. uh, that's why a lot of business like closed down because it's it, it just too hard for business bro Fuck yeah, 20 yeah. bucks. It went up to $22 per tray. For a tray of eggs. $22, eggs, bro. dollars brother. 20, Again, we can make this shit now, out. Now it's coming down to about $15 now per tray. Oh, wow. <laughs> How much was a tray of eggs when you were younger in New Zealand when you, that you can remember? I reckon probably like 10 bucks, $9 something. Yeah. Even eight bucks, probably. I think oh, I can bucks. remember like eight bucks. Yeah. And maybe in a pack of Siggy as well back in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you smoke the Siggies? Huh? You smoke the Siggies? I used to, bro. I used to when I like stressing out a lot when I back in the bakery. Yeah. <laughs> bro, like one job, uh, ro the, the rollies. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I remember the rolly one used to be a pack of $43, now like a pack of 90 bucks. 
So nobody's smoking anymore, but they, uh, <laughs> they, they all vaping nakers. They all vaping. Oh, vaping are even worse than ciggies, bro. <laughs> yeah. Do you reckon it's the worst? Probably, eh? All them chemicals, eh? That's, that's what people say. But like, as smoker, bro, we need something. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, yeah, no. But yeah. what about the other stuff? Do you smoke any of the other stuff back in the oh, day? Oh, no, no, bro. I'm clean, green? brother. No, nah, no, yeah. green. Oh, yeah. every now and then, bro, of yeah, like yeah, some, too. some, now yeah, and some and stuff. Yeah. 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 But a green here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the Get the thing. munchies and the smoke munchies. Them and then go to the bakery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any stories, brother, of like funny customers or something at the bakery? Oh, man. Far out, bro. This is way too long, brother. Like, but give us one. Give us one. Surely you got one, brother. You want a good one. Shit. What do we have? What do we have? Man, I, I don't think I have anything, eh? Because I'm mainly baking at the back, bro. And a lot oh, let the girls okay. serve the customer. Oh, okay. So I'm blocked out at the baker's side and the, the, the girls <laughs> running the shop, you know? Hmm. But, yeah. Wow, fair enough, Kazi. What's, what's the plan for you with, with uh, you? Are you, are you going to go more, more like hone in on being an actor and all of that? Or just yeah. take it as it comes? I, I think I'll be more in as more in a stunt performer bro more stunt yeah. work and acting yeah that's right so whatever uh whatever it comes you know whatever it comes like acting i'm ready to roll uh stunt job comes we we already ready to roll but you know you gotta keep training as well my guy yeah yeah that's it and what, what's the what's the key in preparation for these roles brother what's the what's the key so basically you need to be consistent with your training bro like stunt training which is happening every sunday you know you you, you train i train with uh, uh thomas kiwi thomas kiwi uh, is at the moment he's uh fight fight coordinator for spartacus tv show at the moment oh, okay um and he's maori bro he's cool ass brother like uh he he uh he oh, true. In the oh, he, he's, he's not maori, he's, yeah. he's not he's not cambodian like you and i yeah yeah so we've been we've been basically learning from him bro we learn heaps man like bro like and and now we slowly we can see the result coming a lot of jobs coming a lot of acting a lot of stun jobs coming so which is everybody happy you know it's all about it's all about business at the end of the day you know how you provide food on the table for your family pretty much today mm. Yeah, all yeah. about business. See, yeah. Shout out to the shout out to the brother Marcus Lim, though, brother. Oh. I'm just I'm just in awe of the hustle, cuz and all the cool things you've been able to do along this journey. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing, cuz. And you know, to be a refugee who couldn't speak English took five years to learn, and then boom, away, away, that's brother. It. That's it. I like your cap too, bro. Does it say NZ Warriors? Yeah, up the wires, brother. Always, oh, man. Always up the wires, up, all day, always up the wires, brother. Oh, that way. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, uh, after a while, as always. But are you, you're, you're a wild supporter, too? Oh, all day, bro. Fuck. Whatever, mm. whatever, bro. We stand by them, mate. Yeah. So like yeah. like Bunny. Eh? Bun, Bun's a big Warriors oh, man. Bun, big, Bun. bro. Bun, Bun. <laughs> Way bigger than me, that guy. Way bigger, eh? <laughs> I just watch and I don't say much, but Bun. He, he, yeah, Bun he, say everything. Bun say everything. everything. He, yeah. He, he love this. He he oh, how did you know Bun anyway, bro? How did I know him? Um, mm. How did I first know him? I think just over that COVID period, you know, and he sort of blew up around like the, the meals and giving the meals out and all that stuff. You know, he, when he was doing that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, brother. That's, 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 how, I, that's how I came across him. And then my, my, my mission has just been to talk to as many cool people as possible. So when I, when, when I seen him on Instagram again, I just gave him, gave him a message, brother, and I just... That's what I've been doing, just messaging people from all over the world. Some people have answered back, some people don't open it, some people give me the scene. But you know, yeah, just keep yeah, going. Maybe, I think I think I've sent like four thousand DMs to people across Instagram oh, this year. Let's go, brother. Let's this, this go, just, man. Just, just copy and paste, copy and paste, brother. <laughs> yeah, just send, send, send to people, <laughs> brother. And then if I see someone else, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting person, or even somebody that I disagree with, brother. When I see something and they might have a platform and they say something that I disagree with, I'll even sit down with them because you can learn something, you know what I mean? Yeah, nah, yeah, nah. maybe find some common ground. That's right, that's awesome, man, bro. 
maybe the next guy you should get a stuntman that can refer you, bro. He's one of my. Bro, right, refer me to if this, and that's what I try to do after these finish. I usually ask the bros, oh, yeah. pass me on to anyone, and that's why Ed went passed us on to you, brother. So yeah. you know, so networking, my cousin, because yeah, networking, my goal bro. is to build the biggest podcast in the world, brother. That's the that's, that's the goal. Oh. You know, how do we get there? Or well, you it's one foot in front of the other, eh? it's one episode after another. So yes, yeah, yeah, bro. I'll, I'll 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 refer you one of my good guy. He's uh really he's on Spartacus at the moment. TV yeah, show. I'm down by the hundred percent. Let's get uh, it, my you man. Can dig deep more as he more experienced than me, you know. Yeah, and oh dig deep about the whole stuntman stuff. The man. whole stuntman, maybe he can yeah. tell you a lot. He's uh he's good guy. He's nah, Filipino, well, Kiwi, ooh, yeah, Filipino. he writes in New Zealand. So okay, cool deep, man. let's see. Let's go, yeah. little Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, eh? <laughs> oh, oh. The Pac Man, because and and and, and uh, fighting, kind of because you, you do you still watch like much fighting, like UFC and all that stuff? Oh, yeah, bro. bro. Um, I think I watch when only the boys or the Kiwi oh, okay. people that yeah. are fighting, you know, like um, yeah, yeah, Dan Hooker play a big part of we were when he five or six weeks out. I come to see him every week, you know, to check up on him to see how his body look, you know. This okay, is... proud of him, brother. He got the tabakas. Yeah, brother. I, I don't wow. think many people thought he was gonna beat him there. Wrestler fella, because he's a, you know, because he has he's had trouble with wrestlers, bro. But he fucking he... did that job, brother. Bro, that that was that was really really fuck. You don't know, bro. Really unpredictable, like like things. Yeah. Anything could happen, like especially with Dan, because Dan doesn't give a fuck, eh, brother. Oh, Dan doesn't like, give a fuck. Oh, Dan's just like. Way. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, then they give it that. Yeah, so we, we've, been, uh, yeah, we've been provide him meals, I've been check up on him leading up to the fight. And then uh, when he won weeks out, we just uh, uh, pass him to the you know another team that helping him out on the fight week, ATP yep. or something, fight cam, uh, nutritionist. And then uh, and then he looked really good, bro. He looked look on point. Conditioning looked really, really awesome. Nah, yeah, no, nah. and obviously got the double shout out to Kai too, getting a fucking getting a nice Ooh. little knocky out there. That was that was on, and a quick one too. Day. Yeah, yeah. What did the very say? He's like, hey, how do you got so much powers? Because I'm Maori. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Here he goes. laughs> crack up, mate. Yeah, yeah crack I saw up. that. Even if, but even Izzy, like, let's be honest, Izzy was Izzy was toking him, toasting him up that whole fight. Obviously, he got him. He caught him at the end. Uh, you know, uh, there with that, and then got him in that little choke, but. Izzy was Izzy was giving it to him. Hey, trickers. yeah. The thing is, it's un, unpredictable, bro. That's like right, it's hard bro. to, it's hard to. And trick is hearty, and... brother. He's a hearty cat, eh, brother. He yeah, just seems like, like tired as fuck. Three round, you might be winning, and the last yeah. two round, you never know what gonna happen yeah. next day. Hey? You, Andy, that's right, brother. Because uh, you, you would say Israel was probably winning their whole fight, and then, and even winning that round until trick is fucking yeah. Got him, one but... one mistake, wow. yeah, brother. Anyway, yeah, he's gonna it. bounce back, bro. He oh, he's bounce. gonna bounce back. He's gonna come back. He's gonna beat fucking Drickers. Yeah, I mean, we'll be we probably have to go back to the go back a little bit, but he'll he'll beat whoever's in front of him. Then in the next one, then he'll beat Strickland and Drickers. I reckon. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you bet as well, my G. You bet on TFV too. Oh, of course, cuz. Of course, cuz. If Izzy, if Izzy won, if Izzy won, yeah. That Drake curse is real, eh? Mark, go, away, really, Drake. go away, Drake. Go away, Drake. Go bet on the up, other man. side. Wait, that's what you gotta just realize we're, what side he's betting on and then bet on the other side, eh? Yeah, 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 bro. Fuck. I heard he whoever he's betting on, bro. They will yeah, lose. they always lose, brother. <laughs> hey. Even the other times he bet on his knee too. Go away. <laughs> go away, bro. Oh no, nah, nah, next time we wait for him to bet. And then we yeah, bet go against on the other him, side, bro. eh, brother? Yeah, yeah, hard, hard, hard. You message me, you say, brother, brother, yeah, drink bet on the sky. I'll go, okay, okay, let's go. The other <laughs> what about uh, you? you? You do TAB sometime? Oh, no, I don't, bro. I don't. I, I wanted to, but uh, just like, just, just my mind's not there, bro. Mm. It's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's not like I really wanted to sometimes, like, oh, should I bet? Or like, ah, and then at the end, uh, ended up not. What about horses or anything? Have you ever had like a look? Oh, no, 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 no gambling, bro. Never, like, nah. Bro, just, so many but, Asians like gambling. There you go, casino. There's so many brothers there. Bro, hard out, hard out. Maybe <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just too busy. A lot of things on my mind, oh, bro. Yeah, in, uh, too, too. You don't have I'm time in bodybuilding comp prep as well. I'm in uh, a Still right for, now? Right now, yes. Actually, uh, this is for Gold Coast Australia, brother. 
Oh, when's that? So, so yeah, so all of these, like my mind just really distracted and yeah. like, like just betting on something that's not, but when I'm off, when I'm not competing, I'll be like probably yeah. a lot of having a lot of time, you know, like, fuck, why do not, you, you know? Do you get, do you, do, like, like if you take out, like, say the Gold Coast one, what's that worth? Oh, this is it's like a professional card, brother. Like yeah, you so earn you a pro you card. Win. You oh, you I, earn. I don't understand. So when if you just say if you win first place, yeah. you won a professional card status. So I'm become a professional bodybuilder. What does that mean for my business? It's gonna be booming, you know. Oh, in term okay. of in term of personal training, in term of you know nutritioning uh nutritionist so all yeah, of that like what, like, like what you can charge is a bit more too because you yeah because you've got yeah. a bit you've got a higher status in the game status basically status and you earn you earn nothing at the show bro oh, oh have mean, you not made show? any on the shows huh so you, have you made any in any of the shows you've been to i i made when i represent um to cambodia this is when the south uh 2018 i think south east asian games 16 country they all compete yeah that's not much bro like a couple of like 20 or 30 grand you know usd oh, and right. flight so, ticket included oh you got and, the dub anyway eh, brother as long as you get the dub yeah yeah the but experience. it's more like when you come back uh you bring a lot of exposure people know yeah. what you do yeah. and then you whatever you do in business easier you know mm. it's like you how bring you, it hmm. yeah how, how do you think uh how much of an impact has social media been on your business say it again how much of an impact has social media been on your business oh bro we we're relying on on social media lots in COVID. you know so was that when it changed the most around COVID? yeah yeah for sure bro i mean in general about the our business go paleo what we focusing on on online online everything online you know what does that mean it has to be it has to be consistent and have to be providing a lot of value you know and now people everyone using phone you know everybody using phone so uh when you win a show for example you win a show you post on social media that's how you bring a lot of exposure and whoever around you like for example go paleo they know about go paleo it's like you're free marketing for go paleo you know mm. yeah <laughs> basically more like exposure and um, exposure and telling people this is what we do you know this is our game yeah. things like that bro mm. would you like to like make it like a like a Business that you can ship your meals all around the world. Would that be a goal of yours? Oh, before before pandemic, yes, bro. We actually planning to open oh. in Australia. A lot of people asking us, do you have any branch in Australia, Sydney, Melbourne, and stuff like that? We actually gonna make it happen, but COVID comes in, bro. It kills everything, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, so pivot, eh? yeah, since the pandemic comes in, bro, everything like a reset, brother, like a reset mm. for for any any whatever field you're doing it's like a reset starting yep. again true mm -hmm. so what do you if you if you were to say a 10-year plan from now by the visualization visualizing 10 years from now what does life you think look like for marcus lim and i think i'm gonna be probably 10 years bro i'm gonna try to get into hollywood or some shit man stuntman bro that's what i enjoy the most bro and that yeah um uh, that uh you know and 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 that's where we making good money as well and that's where i want to head it to you know Stunt be an man. actor somewhere you know hey sounds like a good idea brother hollywood actor yeah. Stunt something man. like that brother but hey it's gonna be a journey bro you know whatever you do just just hopefully stick into it and hustling your way out and make a lot of networking you know networking mm. is key bro that's it yeah, hundred percent. Like we felt, you know, if I didn't have, if I didn't have Ed, we wouldn't be here sitting here having the yarn, and then you wouldn't pass me on to whoever you pass me on to. Like yeah, it's passed sure. me on to a few boys, and then that's it, brother. Networking now, networking, networking is key. Yeah, and the more, definitely. the more you show up on set, and that's when you, the more you're connecting with new people. You know, new people, new opportunity, brother. Mm. 
Any any advice for people out there that want to get into the game, but I want to get into business first of all. Let's say business, mm. and then get, give us a give, give us business because because business is something that you 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 you've been you've been deep in for a long time. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, bro. Business. What I see, man. What I see. The most important is you gotta make sure you have you still have your full time job to get your cash flow. Yeah. And then at the same time, when you have your cash flow coming in, that's when you're using that money to start another business. While you work on your nine to five job. Yeah. Right. So you stick into that until you're making a good amount of money and you want to start something business on the side, side hustle. Once that side hustle is working, paying your bill, then maybe you start leaving your nine to five job. You know? So you can't just go straight open the business without knowing, without having any cash flow to support your whatever cost that might come. Yeah. You feel me? So always have a full-time job or whatever the main income source first. And then whatever you want to do, you're branching out like side hustle. Yeah. And then the when you build, the baby up, you build your side hustle up until the point that you are, oh, yeah, okay. Because they say, but well, the first five years going to be hard for business. The first, the first five years, either you make it or you, you gotta, you gotta, you know, fall. Chuck it, chuck it in. <laughs> mm, mm. And that's what I believe in, bro. What I do. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. Eh? You, you just going to make sure you have your income, make sure you save. And then whatever you got left over, you invest on something that you think is going to connect to what you're good at. You know, you got to think about what you're good at as well. So like example, my point of view, um, my, I have to look after my body. Like I have to be in shape all year round. I have to be fit. So what does that mean? I can branching out to training people. I can branching out to provide nutrition. And then I can use my body to do stuntman for the movie. Mm. So that's my point of view as uh, uh, for, for, for myself, you know, like when you have your body, when you're in shape, when you look good, you feel good, you're confident. When you're confident, you attract posit positivity, you know. That that's just that's just me, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh. just me. Yeah, eh? that's just me. Like straight up bodybuilding, bro. Bodybuilding changed my life, changed my perspective. Um, competing in bodybuilding is it's not like a walk in the park, bro. It's a sacrifice, everything like your time, you know, your mates and everything. And and that bodybuilding journey has taught me a lot. I compete 40 shows, bro. It taught me how to, you know. Uh, the hardest sport in the world. They they say this uh, bodybuilding is five percent uh, sport that people can do. You know, and if you can't do that, you can't do anything. What do you, so, so what do you say? They say that it's only five percent of the people can do it. Five percent sport, bro. Five percent people only can do bodybuilding, bro. Oh, okay. And, and it's the hardest sport, man. You how, how much of bodybuilding is mental? Really mental. Yeah. How much? Oh fuck! I would what, say what, what percentage would you? What percentage would you give it? Oh shit! I, I would say a hundred percent, bro. Mental. Hundred percent. Oh, true. Like yeah, yeah, I yeah. Would say it... That's straight up mental, bro. Because you gotta train twice a day and discipline too. Very, you have to be very disciplined. Which all comes from mental, right? Mental. That's right. Because mental. because when you get closer to the show, four, uh, five weeks out, four weeks out, three weeks out, it become tougher. What I mean, tougher is you can't cheat, bro. And people love food. You know, you love food. I love food, bro. I love pie just like you guys. <laughs> but, bro, when you prep for a show, man, like you can't have any of those, bro. You look, you can't even have soft drink. You can't even have anything that's sweet. And then a play with your head. When you play your head, bro, your mental, that's when you're either you let it break you or you keep going, you know. And that's straight up mental, brother. Hmm. So mental and physical at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that, brother. That's yeah. all. Superpowers, cuz. What superpowers you got? 
if you could yeah. uh, if you could have one which one do you want oh, fuck superpower like shit and why do you want it what about you let me let me ask you first teleportation cuz oh, but uh, oh. like a teleportation that i could use in real time and go back in time and wow. see different things yeah wow. i don't want to wow. know the future cuz the future i'm going to make my own future but i want to go back and you know see, check out different things for sure Maybe even go back and talk to the little boy that I was when different things happened in my life and oh. say it's all good brother you know it's all good That's that's actually that's actually what I want to bro if I have a special power man because I love history man I love history Me too yeah. I'm like what happened during that Khmer Rouge Yeah what you can go and really see like actually yeah, feel it oh. and be there Exactly yeah. like emerging back and World War Two, how how Germany? You want to find out what happening? What is yeah? Like, what the actual truth is? Because we've heard stuff from like the mainstream media, but what yeah. is the real? What is the real, brother? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Go in well, those rooms and and listen to those discussions and see what's actually being said. For sure, yeah. I, I think yeah, bro. That's bro. If I have a good power, man. Like you said, bro. That is gonna be one of the man. Like you want to go back in time, nineteen hundred, yeah. to yeah. see what it's all like. You know? Yeah. But but then People, like, with mine, you could also teleport. Like if I wanted to come over to you and do this interview, I could do that too. Fuck, yeah, let's go, let's yeah, go. Yeah, teleport. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's it, it, brother. Man. Yeah, for sure. That's it, brother. Or we could teleport back to the bakery and see what those pies yeah. were really like. Yeah, G. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's that's it. So that would be you too. Would you take a take a teleportation? I would time? too, bro. That bro, that's like I said. I love history, man. Emerging. You can go back in time and then to see what it's like, you know, 1945, bloody World War II, what is on, Japanese and shit, bomb yeah. the Pearl Harbor. I love all of that, bro. I like, sometimes I'm like, sit down, like, bro, like, gee, imagine going back in time, you know, like, experience yeah. all of those without phone, without social media. Yeah, you just what go back and see it. Do? Go back and see it, bro, and and see. Go back to ancient Egypt and see how they really built the pyramids. You know, yeah, like, was the aliens, yeah. was the people, how did they do it? Yeah, that's crazy Ooh. when you think about it, bro. When you think about it, like back then, there's no tools, there's no crane, or, or did they, or did they, and did we lose it? Yeah, you know or what I mean. Because people... there's, there's there's a possibility that we could have just lost the technology, brother. There's that there's that possibility. Okay. I, I've seen. Because you, <coughs> you know about the Library of Alexandria? No, I don't. Bro. There was a but... library in Alexandria, which was the main port city in, uh, you know, in Egypt. Well, it still is, but and that's where people, you know, so every back in the days, it was the bustling port city. But it had a huge library there that had like books that and and uh, like manuscripts in there from you know from all over the world that were there. But it was it was uh it was commissioned to be burnt down by Caesar. In the 2000, like you know, around his like Julius Caesar, I think it was, they burnt it down. So they got it's either, but uh, but there's a big belief that he didn't, he burnt it down. But what they did is they took all the information, put it all on boats, and then and then took it off and and, and, and took it to Rome instead. So Rome could become the superpower of the world. So I wonder if like some of the technology was lost, like and all burnt or destroyed or or hidden. Interesting, eh? Interesting. Yeah, who knows, brother? Saw theory. We just think all theory, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like those books say business theory 30 grand for fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, good point. <laughs> hey, like, fuck, like, why did I do business? Nah, but that's what you were told, right? That's what your, 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 the people that looked after you, that's what they were told. <laughs> that's what our parents are told. Everyone's told this is how you do it. Like, like you, like you know, now because you've been doing business for a long time, you learn business doing business. Mm, yeah. mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, brother. I just wanna I got one more question too, brother. Food, because you are a, a cooking kind of man. Um, if you could only have one meal for the rest of your life, every day you gotta eat this meal. What meal do you choose? Bro, I will have uh the Vietnamese noodle soup, bro. Pho, yeah. if you call that pho. Yeah, bro, pho. I will I will eat every day, man. I just yeah. love it. They call beef and beef ball noodle soup. Yeah, and, that's you every day. Oh, that's me, brother. I'll be every day, man. Like, and what you drinking it with? What you drinking huh? with it? What, 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 what liquid are you drinking with it? Oh, I'll be. Uh, there's a. They call that lemon tea. The what's that called? Lemon uh, tea. Ice, ice lemon tea, bro. I would go with that with that noodle. 
Fuck. <laughs> all day, G. Every day, G. All what right, about yourself, bro? You got to answer. Every day, but I boil up, because boil up, I go bacon bones, I go uh, some nice dough boys in there, water crisps, brother, you know, all oh. the good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, brother. Boil up for me, because I love it. Love it. Boil up. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, good. yeah. That's Wait, sick. I just want to say, because time's the most valuable commodity we have as human beings, the one thing we can never get back. We can always get back money and things, but time spent is time lost. So thank you for sharing over an hour of your time with me and anybody that listens to this for years to come, brother. I really, really, really appreciate you, my brother. And it's been it's been awesome to learn about the journey, to learn mm. about not only the entrepreneur, which is all I, I thought he was just an entrepreneur, but the actor, the stunt man, the you know all the all the facets of entrepreneurship, the bodybuilder, and and everything else in between, Kazi. And I hope you enjoyed the conversation. And hopefully this isn't the last time we sit down and have a young... Nah, for sure. I'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come come back more, you know, for, for yeah, more brother. in the future, brother, for sure. Yeah, definitely, brother. And yeah, pass me on to whoever you want to, too, brother. For Big sure, love to man, you no. and wifey and all the family. Mm. Thank you so much for watching this full episode of Mind the Mic. It takes a lot of time, energy and effort to create these episodes. So to know that you've watched and listened to the entire thing means the world to myself and all our hosts if you could before you leave please hit the subscribe button and share this episode out to as many people as possible it would help us so much thank you again to everybody that's still here still watching thank you for all your comments all your shares all the dms appreciate you all make sure you follow us on every platform have an awesome morning have an awesome night depending on where you are in the world mind the mic out oi have you hit the link in bio yet Watch full episodes on YouTube or listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and all streaming platforms.